Hello everyone, our lesson for today is about signaling molecules and cell surface receptors. This lesson will discuss the different types of signaling molecules and cell surface receptors. Specifically, it will tackle the functions of the major types, functions, and structures of these cell communication components. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to describe the different types of signaling molecules, describe and, and describe the different types of cell surface receptors. So as a start, let me ask you this question. So what do cells need again in order to properly communicate? So in our previous lesson, we've talked about you know, the, the ligands, the receptors, the second messengers, you know, as the key components you know, of cell communication. So for our discussion today, we'll focus more on the different types of ligands and the different types of cell surface receptors. So signaling molecules are those chemical signals that are released by signaling cells. So they are regarded as the messengers of the cells. And signaling molecules are secreted by the signaling cell through exocytosis, while some simply diffuse out of the cell. So signaling molecules could be in the form of a gas, steroids that acts as hormones, also, peptide hormones, neurotransmitters, neuropeptides, polypeptide growth factors, and second messengers. Okay. So first are gases. So a common example is a nitric oxide or the NO, non gas. This is a major paracrine signaling molecule, and it's involved in the functions of the nervous, immune, and circulatory system. So it diffuses easily across the plasma and it's a very short life. Therefore, it functions over sm short distances. Okay. So here are some of the key functions of nitric oxide gas. No? So it reduces degranulation and mediator release in mast cells, increases mucus secretion in epithelial cells, it reduces adherence and secretion of neutrophils. It accelerates wound repair, you know, so it, it stimulates production of fibroblasts. It is also important for the reduction in cytokine release in macrophages. And most importantly, it is important in vasodilation. So vasodilation is, uh, or vasodilators are those that are reali relaxes you know, the blood vessels and so it increases the blood flow of uh, the blood you know, towards a certain organ. So, say for example, in uh, in older men, so we know that erection in in older men is is really hard. Okay, so it's difficult. Okay, so they take in some uh, of these vasodilators, so like the Viagra. Okay, Viagra is or the, or or I mean originally conceived as no, as an antidepressant, but uh, during the clinical trials, they found out that the majority of the patient no, in the trials had developed erection. No, and so instead of manufacturing it as an antidepressant, so they realized that there will be mo much better market for the product if it will be uh, manufact it will be marketed as no, as something to help with the erection. And so this is because of these nitric oxide. Now these are vasodilators. It increases the blood flow through the penis, and so it 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 helps you no know, men, older men, you not know, to uh, to have a lasting um, erection. Another type of signaling molecule are steroids. So these are small hydrophobic molecules. That makes them easily, that's why they are, they can easily cross the membranes because they are hydrophobic and we know that membranes are nonpolar. So they act as hormones. Okay, so they are sometimes called steroid hormones. And examples are aldosterone, no cortisol, testosterone, estradiol, and progesterone. So testosterone and progesterone, these are uh, 
responsible for the male and female development no? during puberty okay, and also in the production of the egg and the sperm cell so i hope you will be able to understand the function of these hormones no because you have your physiology classes now okay so these are the function of steroid no hormones now there are also hormones that are made up of proteins so these are called peptide hormones these are class of proteins which are bound by receptor proteins and enable or disable a biological pathway example of peptide hormones are insulin the one that regulates sugar in the blood glucagon follicle stimulating hormone the production of uh, egg cells and prolactin is the production of um, a milk in in mammary glands no, and others so how there's a specific proteins for peptide hormones no, that stimulate specific response and they act upon uh, the uh, uh, the dna no, in the target cells so cellular activity is initiated indirectly by the action of second messengers Neurotransmitters are other types of signaling molecules, so they, they're the ones that carry signals between neurons, so in between the synapses. They are hydrophilic molecules, okay? So that's why they are unable to cross the plasma membrane because the plasma membrane is hydrophobic. So they're also, they also bind not to receptors. So for example, in here, uh, these are the vesicles that are, that, you no, know, that, carries these signaling molecules from these cells to react upon this target cell so receptors are present at the uh, exposing the uh, at the, at the receptors with the target cell the synaptic lift and so neurotransmitters are released no, by uh, this so these are some of the other examples no, of neurotransmitters and their respective functions Neuropeptides, on the other hand, are small proteins that are produced by the neurons that act on G-protein coupled receptors. Later on, we will understand what are those. And they're responsible for the slow onset, long-lasting modulation of synaptic transmission. So often, they coexist with each other with the other neurotransmitters in a single neuron. So they can actually function as a neurotransmitter they can also function as neurohormones examples are the encephalins and the endorphins so if you notice uh, endorphins are also included here as neurotransmitters because actually they have almost the same functions polypeptide growth factors on the other hand are those that control the growth and differentiation of cells examples are nerve growth factor epidermal growth factor and interleukin 2. so you have here polypeptide growth factor that could uh, be um, the mode of signaling could be through endocrine, paracrine, or autocrine. Okay, so paracrine could we know that it have an effect on nerve cells, endocrine on other organs, and autocrine on the same cells. So, other polypeptide growth, fa growth factors now could stimulate transcription of genes that were previously silent. Now, say, so for example, in protein synthesis. And some could activate genes that regulate enter cells into and through the cell cycle so that promotes proliferation of the cells. Second messengers, on the other hand, are considered as, uh, they're also considered as signaling molecules because they're the one that relays the message. No? So these are substances apart from the signaling molecules okay, that are used to relay the message and usually used to amplify the signal. So they release and broken down by specific enzymatic reactions. Example is the cyclic adenophase monophosphate. Okay, so you have here example the CM. Okay. Okay, so those are the different types of ligands or signaling molecules. Now let us talk about cell surface receptors. So they're the ones that interact with the signaling molecules and are found in the target cell so they are unique structures on the plasma membrane now each one of these cell surface receptors has a unique way of reacting to different molecules to perform their functions in general receptors detect signaling molecules 
they bind with them and then induce the response so different forms of cell surface receptors are the steroid receptors the tyrosine kinase receptors the cytokine superfamily receptors and the g protein coupled receptors steroid receptors are those that are found in the cytosol in the plasma membrane and in the nucleus so they lead to the exchange and gene expression okay, that cause an alteration in the transcriptional activity of the cell so some of the receptors are always bound to the dna even when the hormone is not present like thyroid hormone receptor some can bind only when the hormone is there like estrogen and glucocorticoid receptors so this is how no, the receptors okay are you know, acting upon the binding of the steroid hormone tyrosine kinase receptors on the other hand are the largest group of enzyme linked receptors they have receptors for most polypeptide, polypeptide growth factors and they act by phosphorylating you know, the substrate protein that's why they're called kinase so kinases are the ones that transfers you no know, phosphate from one uh, compound to another and they play a major role in growth and differentiation so the the receptors these are the receptors that are used for the egf ngf pdgf insulin and many other growth factors cytokine receptors okay, are those that include receptors for most cytokines like interleukin 2 and erythropoietin and some polypeptide hormones like growth hormones they are associated with non-receptor protein kinases not like the protein kinase kinases which get activated on ligand binding so if you have noticed here you have a receptor with a cytokine ligand and you have here the the, the tyrosine residues no. these are the uh protein tyrosine kinases no, non-receptor protein kinase kinases so they are associated you now with the cytokine receptors lastly are the g protein coupled receptors they're also known as 7tm or 7 trans transmembrane domain receptors because gpcrs they pass you know, through the plasma membranes seven times so one two three four five six and seven so they pass through the plasma membrane seven times they form many extracellular loops one two one two three loops and they have highly conserved cysteine residues that form the sulfide bonds now for stability okay their extracellular regions may be glycosylated forming the sulfide bonds and and they also have primary proteins that dissociate during activation of the receptor so what are the biological functions so they're involved in the reception of spontaneous taste perception of light neurotransmission function of endocrine and exocrine organs exocrine glands no chemotaxis exocytosis control of blood pressure embryogenesis development cell growth and differentiation hiv infection and so last oncogenesis okay so that ends our lesson so if you uh, during your review so this answering the summary questions will be a very great help so what are these questions what are signaling molecules? What are its different types and how do they differ from each other? What are cell surface receptors and how do they interact with signaling molecules? And what are the different types of cell surface, rece cell surface receptors? So I hope you will be able to answer this one as you go on review with this lesson. Okay, so if you have any question, you can contact me through my email or your respective lecturer for their email. You can key in your questions at your Facebook Messenger group chat. I would like to thank Mr. Ern Oliver Sibalanda for the help in making this slide presentation. Okay, thank you very much. And see you again in my next lesson.